What's up, ladies? Hello. Today, we're going to talk about how long should I really be cutting for? Um, I'm going to give you a minute to jump on. And while I do that, I like to share some personal things because I think when we get real and share what's happening in life, it helps people not only relate, but also be like, oh, I'm not alone. <laughs> so right now, I am homeschooling my five-year-old. And it's wild. Some days are great. And some days are like, right now I'm chugging coffee <laughs> to get some energy. And I'm like, okay, I need more patience. I need to practice more patience. Right. So I think a beautiful thing is that it gives a lot of awareness, even that's really challenging, but with more awareness, then we're able to grow. Right. Cool. Say hello, ladies, as you're coming on. Okay, so I got a few questions, which is going to be the next few lives that I'll be talking through. So today, the question we got was, how long do I stay in a macro cut? I was able to lose 26 pounds with macros, but I did it over the course of a year, and then I felt like my body crashed, so I took a break, but I've gained 10 of those pounds back, right? So I'll talk about why you gain the weight back, but then I'll also answer the question of like, how long really should you be cutting and why, right? What's the philosophy behind that? Now, as a reminder, everyone's body is different and everyone's mind is different. So I'm going to give um, a pretty specific approach, um, but just know if, if, you, like you can give and take some weeks because your body and your mind may be in a different place. Okay. All right. What's up ladies. So those of you coming on, let me repeat the question. This was the question that I'm going to answer today that we got. How long do I stay in a macro cut? I was able to lose 26 pounds using macros, but I did it over the course of a year. Then I felt like my body crashed. And so I took a break, but I've gained 10 pounds back. Okay. So, um, for at Queens of Iron, we have clients lose about one pound per week. And so we actually do at six months, we reverse them to maintenance. Almost everybody, as long as they have more weight to lose, if they've already hit their goal, they're reversing earlier, right? Um, I personally don't like to keep most women in a cut longer than six months because typically your body needs a break and your mind needs a break, right? It's not just your body. Um, that's a pretty significant time to be in a cut, right? Six straight months. And so usually that's about 26 pounds, right? That you're able to just shut off like that. Some women may love a four month cut and then they go up to maintenance. And then after spending four or so months in maintenance, then they can come back down into a cut. Uh, for most women, we do a six month cut, bring them up to maintenance, for four months and then back down into a cut to get the rest of the fat off. Okay. Now, why would we do that? Right? I mean, again, like we said, to give the body and the mind a break, um, the mind needs a break to help you with compliance. Sometimes it's like, man, I'm so tired of being hungry. I'm so tired of being in a deficit. Like I, I struggle to be compliant because I've been doing this for so long. I'm like, yeah, that's normal. Bring your calories up, right? Let's start living in maintenance in a, for, at, for a little bit. Now, ladies, as a reminder, what happens in maintenance calories when you're at your true maintenance calories? What's happening is body recomposition, right? You're losing fat. You're losing fat in maintenance slowly, but you're losing fat and you're gaining muscle mass. The scale is staying the same. It fluctuates, but it's it's the same, right? Like up or down, up or down, but it's the same average. If you're gaining weight and you're like, oh, I'm in maintenance, but I'm gaining weight, but it's muscle. You're not really in maintenance. You're in a surplus, which is okay. Yes, you're gaining muscle, uh, but you don't gain weight in maintenance. Maintenance, right? You're maintaining your weight, right? That's like quality body recomposition or right recomp. You're recomping your body, right? Um, so in maintenance, typically what happens pending compliance is every three to five weeks, your measurements drop, which means you're becoming a tighter, more fit version of yourself. But why is the scale staying the same? Because you're building muscle mass, right? Maintenance is an amazing place to build habits because you're tightening up, but you're able to eat more and build muscle. The more muscle you have, the more calories you burn at rest. Some women say, I have an amazing metabolism. And it's like, you probably have a lot of muscle mass. Other women say, my metabolism sucks. And you probably don't have very much muscle mass, right? Or you've been like chronically dieting essentially. So another reason, so we, we 
would not keep you in a deficit for too long, or I would recommend you not being in a deficit for too long, just to recap, to give your mind a break, to help you with compliance, right? To, to just allow yourself more energy because you're eating more food. And then to give your body a break to increase calories and start building that muscle mass, okay? Start amping up your metabolism. So when we go back into a cut, hopefully it's quicker, it's easier because you have more muscle mass on you. You can eat more in a deficit because you have more muscle mass on you, right? And then bring you back up to maintenance, okay? Any questions on that, ladies, just drop in the comment. Let me know. Okay, now, um, so this gal, she said she lost 26 pounds in a year. Um, so why would it take someone a year versus like we do a pound per week, right? Why on earth would it take someone a year versus someone else could do it in six months, right? And the reason we do one pound per week is to help preserve your muscle mass. You can go faster, but what happens is you typically lose muscle mass and you don't want to lose your muscle mass, right? You want to hang on to your muscle mass and just have quality weight loss, which is the equivalent of fat loss. Okay. So essentially it would just take someone longer with lack of compliance, right? Now, lack of compliance is not a bad thing. It's actually really normal. So what needs to happen there? You're building habits, right? You're gathering awareness. It's like, okay, I totally blew it, up, blew it on the weekend. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing to feel bad about. But it's awareness to say, but why did I blow it on the weekend? Did I not pre-plan my macros? Have I been restricting myself during the week? So I feel like, oh my gosh, I'm just like dying for all this food for the weekend, right? Or did you go out with friends or go out with your loved ones? And you're like, I don't even know how to track this. I'm just going to eat whatever. Whatever that reason is, let's find that reason and then start to problem solve, right? If it's like, well, I went out to eat all weekend, I had no idea how to track it. It's like, boom, okay, so you know the issue, so let's start practicing how to track it while you're out, right? Um, if it's like, I've been restricting myself all week, and so I just totally like kind of binge start-ish cycle, right, from the week to the weekend, amazing. Now you know the, the I don't want to be like, that's a problem, but it's like, now you know what you need to solve, right? So for example, add more play foods in during the week. You don't have to eat only egg whites. I know I post breakfast all the time with egg whites. We love egg whites. They're really easy. It's a really lean source of protein, right? But you don't only have to eat that. Make sure you're adding in foods you love. Don't eat the same thing every day. I've talked about this before to avoid vitamin and mineral deficiency, but also to keep it fun, to keep it a lifestyle and not a diet, right? So Awareness is just allowing you to say, okay, cool. I have awareness. Now I know what next step that I need to solve, right? Women do that all the time in this program. That's what they come in for, right? Is the coaching to say, how can I be on track? How can I be consistent? How can I hit all my goals without any questions? Like, how can I just know what to do, what's right for my body and just follow suit, right? So if you feel like people who are getting results are perfect, uh, they never are. <laughs> Few and far between are like laser compliant. It's great. Um, but most women are not. It's just life, right? It's just life. Okay. So now her next piece was, um, oh, and actually here, let me go one more thing. So another thing that's causing problems for ladies is you're staying in a cut for too long. And some women are like in a cut for years, right? How is that possible? Why would they really be cutting for years? It's just lack of compliance, right? So they're overeating, undereating, overeating, undereating. So it's like they're constantly in a diet phase because they can never get the fat off, right? Um, but it's they, they don't need the cut. They need the habit development. And so oftentimes what you can do is say, okay, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to bring myself up to true maintenance. I have a video all about reverse dieting. If you want that, just comment reverse dieting. And I walk through like what you should expect, how to do it, the rate of increase, all that. So let me know if you want that. I'll send that over. Okay. Um, but uh, so yeah, if you, if you are chronically dieting, you can bring yourself up to maintenance, practice habits in maintenance, because then you're allowing your body to have enough energy or food, right? Energy is food, right? To build muscle mass instead of like 
constantly kind of pulling yourself in it in, in a deficit, right? Eating less than your body really needs, which can be hard for the body or the mind. Okay. So I personally, I would stand by the fact for most women, not all, I would say, I wouldn't really recommend cutting longer than six months. Um, few and far between we've had clients cut for six months. They're losing fat so smoothly throughout the whole thing. And they're like, wait, I don't want to go to maintenance yet. Like I'm doing really well. My body's continuing to shed. My mindset feels good. I don't want to stop yet. We're like, yeah, let's keep going, right? Let's get another five pounds, maybe 10 pounds down. But then we really should bring you to maintenance to just make sure that you, you just have so much health to your metabolism. And of course, to them, put yourself in a position to be able to build muscle more efficiently. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, so now another thing she said was, um, I felt like my body crashed, right? So that's a really beautiful piece of awareness. And what that's saying is your body your body didn't have enough to recover essentially, right? Your body could be crashing for sure because lack of food. It could also be crashing because of lack of quality of food, right? Hitting your macros with processed food is very different than hitting your macros with whole foods, right? It's, it's really different. The level of energy you're getting and able to use, even though the macros are the same. Let me know if you have questions on that. Okay. So she said, my body crashed. So it could be um, lack of food. It could be lack of quality. It could be lack of sleep. It could be lack of stress management. There, there's a lot of reasons why that may have happened. Um, but low food is certainly one of those things. Low calories, I should say. Then she said, so I took a break, which essentially should be, you should have gone to maintenance, not just, okay, I'm done tracking for a little bit. It's like, ooh, that, that's a problem, right? We must learn the habits in maintenance like getting compliant in maintenance, because that's how you avoid gaining it back. You must learn the habits in maintenance to avoid gaining it back. We must, we must, we must, especially for women who go through the cutting process. You look and feel amazing. You've cut the fat off. You feel so good. And then you're like, boom, baby, I'm done. It's like, whoa, you are not done. We need to increase your calories to maintenance and teach your mind and your body how to maintain. Then you can wean yourself off macros. Because when you look and feel amazing in your body and then suddenly you can have more food, it's a really slippery slope. So we need to go through all of those phases, getting the fat off, increasing calories to teach your body how to eat more and not gain any of it back, but actually keep losing, right? Because in maintenance, we're still losing fat, right? Practice the lifestyle in maintenance, then slowly wean off. How we wean women off of macros of tracking is we say like, it depends on the client, but for example, we'd be like, okay, you're going to track five days a week and then do not track two days a week for a few weeks and then we'll catch any trends. Uh-oh, low belly's popping up. All right, love, talk me through those two days. What happened those two days? Then we can start identifying, okay, what if we made this tweak? What if we made this week? Right, so finding the lifestyle tweaks. Okay, then you're nailing it, tracking five days, not tracking two. Boom, let's track four days and not track three and so on, right? Habits are everything, right? So this gal, she gained the 10 pounds back because she didn't really have the habits built to be able to maintain. It's more than likely because she didn't do the reverse, build the habits there, or it sounds like maybe didn't do the reverse at all. It's so vital, ladies, to do that reverse. And um, we had one amazing woman. I think she had 30 pounds to lose. And she's like, I just, you know, I just want to do six months. I'm like, that's fine. You know, we could get that 30 pounds or 26, let's say 25 to 30 pounds off depending on your compliance, right? During that time. But you're missing the other piece of the puzzle, right? We still got to increase macros then. So the reverse diet is this whole process, right? It's not like, bam, you're in maintenance. Like, ladies, it takes time. You've got to increase nice and slow. So your body doesn't, doesn't gain any weight during the reverse diet. Will the scale pop up as you increase carbohydrate? Certainly, because your cells are retaining water because the extra glucose, that part is normal. But usually in about a week, some women four days, some women a week and a half, usually it's about a week, it will drop right back down. And typically it will drop even lower because during the reverse, you're still in a deficit. You're just making that deficit smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, boom, baby, until you hit maintenance then sit in maintenance for like four months. And some of you might be like, oh, I, you know, I, I don't want to sit in maintenance that long. It's like, I hear you. I, I totally get that. But that time investment is worth like basically never having to track again, right? You can track like as a backup if needed, but usually you only need to track for like three days and they're like, okay, yeah, I'm back on it, right? When you really go through that whole process, 
it becomes you. You become, right? So it doesn't feel like so much of an effort because you become. So maintaining it is easy because it's who you are at that point. It's a really, really effective strategy and it, it's, it cannot be overlooked. So really make sure you nail each of those phases to then be able to wean off macros and just live in freedom for the rest of your life in your strength, in your body, in your mind, in your nutrition. It's so worth it. It's so worth it. Okay, cool. All right, ladies, let me see if there's anything else. Oh yeah. Okay, so I actually wanted to talk about um, one more thing. So we had um, a gal, also, actually I was talking to her today. It's so fun because I love when women are excited to gain a lot of muscle. It's super cool, right? And not everybody is like that. They just want to like gain some muscle, feel amazing, which is how I am, right? I, I like to just feel comfortable and live my life, not have this be my entire life, right? Um, but she wanted to gain a ton of muscle from where she's at. And so I want to just quickly share the strategy that I shared with her because it's very different than what I just explained to you. Um, most of our clients, not all of them, but like 95% of them, after we get all the fat off they want, they live in maintenance. Like they just live there. It's a great place to build muscle mass. Your weight stays the same. So you're super comfortable. Like it's just an easy life. Like it just feels very good. So you can focus on family, your career, whatever else. It's a beautiful space for like mental freedom, basically. However, if you want to gain a ton of mass, here's what I recommend, depending how much body fat you have, okay? Let's say that you don't have very much body fat and you're petite or, or not, but you don't have very much body fat. And you're like, I want to build all the freaking muscle. Here's what I'd recommend. Again, it depends on each woman, but here's like a pretty solid plan. I would say go into a surplus for about six months, maybe four, depending on the woman. Uh, so a surplus for four to six months. In a surplus or a bulk, right, which is another way to say it, I'd recommend gaining one pound per month. So in a deficit, you're losing one pound per week with the right macros, with the right lifestyle habits, with the right food quality. In a surplus, I'd recommend gaining one pound per month. What? It's so you don't gain a bunch of excess fat. You just want to be gaining muscle mass, right? You don't want to just be like stacking on fat. Oh my gosh, then you have to go into a cut. So in a surplus, here, Kelly, I, I love your comment. Give me just a second. I'll absolutely answer that. I love this comment. Yes. Um, so in a surplus, you're gaining one pound per month, right? So let's say you go six months in a surplus. So you have gained six pounds. If you do that surplus correctly, you may not have to go into a deficit. Depends on the woman. It depends on what happened during that surplus. What you can do is go back down into maintenance because in maintenance, what's happening? You're shedding the body fat. You're shedding the body fat much slower than a deficit, much, much slower than a deficit, right? But you're, you're becoming a tighter, more fit version of yourself. So a strategy, not the only strategy, many ways to skin the cat, but a great strategy to just stack on mass is to go six month surplus, four to six month maintenance, six plus six month surplus, four to six month maintenance. Your body will look so good. You'll be, you'll be like, I don't want to, I didn't, I'm the word that came around, like, you'll be huge, but not like that. Like, you'll build a, an amazing amount of muscle mass. Here's the caveat. Please pay attention. Your lifting program determines what you look like. It is not just, I work out, I lift weights, so I'm going to crush it. No, no, no. And I've made this mistake myself. <laughs> Um, I've been a trainer 15 years, six, the first six years I was an in-person trainer and I didn't know what physique shaping was just like the other trainers out there. We, we just worked out, right? We did squats, we deadlift. I mean, we did all the things, but there, there wasn't deep strategy, right? It was like, we're getting fit. We're getting strong. That's not physique shaping. That's general fitness, right? Nothing wrong with that. Um, but, but you'll feel like you plateaued because your body's not really changing. Your strength is going up, but your body's not really doing what you think it should do. And it's because you're missing that deeper level of strategy, right? So I did that. Um, and I taught Les Mills body pump. I know some of you do it. It's super fun, but it's endurance lifting, right? So it, 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 like physique shaping shapes physiques. CrossFit has, has its outcome, right? CrossFit doesn't shape physiques, just like CrossFit doesn't get you ready for a strongman competition. You get what I'm saying? Like every form of lifting has a different outcome. So make sure, make sure, especially in a bulk, oh my gosh, make sure that your program is laser specific to a very 
very tangible outcome to say, okay, if I do this, my body will do this. If you don't know that outcome, who make sure you know that outcome before you go into this process, because the worst thing that could happen, or I mean, it's not horrible, but it does not feel good is when you cut or you bulk. And then you say, I don't really like what my body looks like. If I had a dollar for every person I've heard say that I'd probably have oh, not that much, like $1,500. So much. Women say that all the time in the Facebook group. I got to my goal weight and I don't like what my body looks like. Why aren't my shoulders bigger? Why, why aren't this? Why aren't this? Why aren't this? It's like love. It's because where's your volume going? You don't have enough strategy in your lifting program to design and shape this, this goddess body that you're really wanting. So make sure paired with the proper macros and nutritional strategy that you have the right lifting plan for your specific goals and body and body. Okay. Kelly, so good. So you don't have to track macros the rest of your life. Heck, no, you don't. Heck, no, you don't. But you must make sure that I know. Ho hopefully, the the ladies that are on right now, you've been on this whole time. So you have to make sure that once you hit your goal and you've gotten all the body fat off, that's one phase. Then the next phase is you need to increase your macros. That's reverse dieting, right? To find your true maintenance. How do you know when you've hit your true maintenance? Slow and steady, baby. Slow and steady. Like 125 calorie to 150 calorie increase like every three weeks is a not, it's not laser specific to every single individual, but that's a really solid rate of increase. Okay. In maintenance, your measurements are going to be steady. Your weight is going to be steady. In true maintenance, every three to five weeks, boom, measurements drop like waist, low belly, thigh, right? Because you're toning up, you're getting fit, you're getting tighter, you're getting stronger, you're getting leaner, but your weight stays the same, right? Then once you have found your true maintenance, then continue tracking your macros for like four months in maintenance, get compliant, not just to be compliant, but ladies, compliance is building habits. That's where you're building your lifestyle habits, continuing high food quality, but you have more space to play. Go eat your burger, have a salad on the side with dressing on the side, right? Not fries. You don't need burger and the fries, right? Maybe sometimes, but it's like, why do we even want to feed our body that, right? Have the vegetables, you know what I'm saying? So learn the lifestyle habits. Then after about four months of hitting compliance in uh, maintenance, then start slowly weaning off macros. And then you usually don't have to track. Years and years and years and years and years can go by and you still don't have to track. Again, like maybe, you know, a few days a year. Like if you're like, man, I feel a little fluffy today. It's like, cool, track your macros for a day. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's amazing. It's so much freedom. I love that. Yeah, cool, Alexandria. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, reverse sighting is really fun. It can be a mindset game for some. If you have questions about it, let me know. Uh, yeah, go to maintenance, girl, for a while. Maintenance is, an, is a phenomenal place to live. And then you're building all those habits in maintenance. So when you wean off of macros, you'll naturally stay in maintenance. It's amazing. So your weight will stay about the same and you'll just feel amazing all the time. Like this is not a joke. It's so cool. <laughs> cool. All right, cool. Low belly, that is what I want. I'm building strength, but growing a little belly. Okay, so that means you're in a surplus, yeah. In maintenance, you'd be coming more fit, right? You'd be, you're, you'd see your abs more and more and more. Um, so it sounds like you're in a, a little bit of a, a surplus, which is okay, right? It depends on your goal. Yeah, cool. Awesome, ladies. Oh my gosh, these little like gnats, I just sucked one out of my nose. They're like all over. It's so annoying, I hate them. Life of... A child, <laughs> a life of a mother with a young child. You know, our dishes are never perfectly clean. Okay. Um, any other questions, ladies? Is there any other points that you want me to touch on uh, before I end this video today? I'm so glad that you were here. Thanks for uh, those comments. And it's so fun. It's like, there's so much information, ladies. Instead of searching for all the information everywhere, Find like one to two professionals that you align with and just hold steady. It's like put your blinders on and just hold steady, hold steady, hold steady, and then learn your body, learn your body. Here's my other tip before I jump off. Know who that professional is talking to because every 
professional has a very, very laser specific niche, if they know what they're doing, a very laser specific niche. Um, a lot of you who have talked to us, we refer you out. We love you, but we work with really high functioning female professionals. You're in the gym, you're putting in the work, you're doing the best you can. You may not know what to do nutritionally, but you are driven, you're doing the best you can. And you're like, why aren't I seeing the results I wanna see? I'm like, come on, we got you, right? That 1% next level. For those who are still kind of figuring it out, cool. We got lots of trainers in the network, right? We've had uh, people take advice from someone who's talking to people who are 300 and 400 pounds and they're 150 pounds. I'm like, well, they're not talking to you. That strategy is not for you. It's for a specific person. So make sure you know who is the target audience of who this person is talking to and is not me. And if it's not me, boom, go to the next, 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 right? All right, cool. Kelly, the diet seems to be the most important to get definition. Okay, I'm gonna show you something. You're right in a sense, but I'm going to show you something. Let me pull up my Canva. Where are you? Um, yes, for sure. For sure. Nutrition and macros is what determines body fat percentage, right? However, I'm going to show you a picture. Physique shaping is magic. I'm not joking. It's incredible. So I'm going to show you uh, one of our current clients. This is a one pound gain. Gain. How in the F did she get more fit and tone. Let me pull her up here. Let me fix my screen. How did she get more fit and tone? This is only four weeks. She lost eight centimeters, gained a pound because she's in a surplus. How was she more fit and tone? Even she was like, what the hell is this? I'm like, dude, strategy, deep, deep, deep strategy, deep strategy in the lifting routine. Same outfit, you guys one month apart, one pound up on the right. How insane is that? Strategy is everything. Okay. Let me actually show you one more. I'm going to show you, um, Melissa. Yeah. This is only three and a half pounds. Okay. If she was doing the same lifting routine here as she was here, that three and a half pounds would not look like that. On the left, she was doing Caroline Gerving iron series on the right. She was doing Queens of iron physique shaping. Why is that such a drastic difference with only three and a half pounds and like a little over a month? It's physique shaping. It's paired with the right macros. So although certainly macros are amazing, I mean, gosh, you guys look at that five weeks. Macros are amazing for a uh, body fat percentage, but the way that physique shaping builds and shapes your body, I feel like is where her front foot up. Yeah. I feel like is almost an equal player in the game. Maybe not an equal player, but not an 80, 20 rule. General fitness, sure, 80-20. Physique shaping, dude, it's like 60-40, I think. The, maybe, yeah, maybe 55-45. <laughs> anyway, so that's my two cents there. All right, so cool. I'm new to macros, and your videos have been a huge help to wrap your head around the concept. I love it. Yes, any questions you have, let me know. You guys, I'm here to educate. Like, yes, we have coaching programs. Yes, we have, like, a physique shaving secrets program. We have all kinds of stuff to help women who want that. But I'm also here to educate you and to just help you learn in a way that's, like, you can grasp the concept and apply it. Grasp and apply. Grasp and apply, right? Uh, so, yes, my pleasure. I'm so glad that they're helpful. It's amazing. Cool. Love it. Love it. Yeah, girl. All right, cool. All right, ladies, have an amazing day. Shoot me over any questions and a message or whatever, and uh, we can chat. Okay, I'm here for you. All right, have a great day. Talk to you later.